for um, being with us here tonight. Um, and we are going to get started. So um, our first speaker this evening is Mr. Clint Williams. He's our Director of Enrollment. And he's gonna tell you a little bit um, about Thornton Academy. So Mr. Williams, take it away. Take it away. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Katie. Welcome everybody to our October virtual event here. I'm, I'm excited to be able to share a few things about Thornton Academy with you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak briefly to, to the facts that you see here in front of you, most notably um, being here in the state of Maine, being the number one safest, most peaceful state in the US is kind of an interesting fact. And we're, we're proud to be in that category, especially during these times. Um, some of the other really interesting facts are the, the vast number of academic courses offered at over 200. Again, we are founded in 1811. We have a long tradition, a long history um, with serving students and serving students at high level, as you can see, 28 AP level classes. Uh, and, and the countries that are represented are vast in over 52 in our total school population. So those are some quick facts and on, on we go. Where is Thornton Academy? Most of you watching probably already know that we're located in a nice coastal Maine town of Saco, Maine, in the southern part of the state of Maine. And, and the unique thing about it is clearly we're, we're 15 minutes away from Portland, as you can see, and 90 minutes away from the historic city of Boston, Massachusetts. So it, we're very accessible for local folks and, and students around the world. It's a it's a hop, skip, and a jump, if you will, from the big city of Boston, Massachusetts, where they have a lot of uh, international flights coming into it. This is one of my favorite picks, and, and clearly we are in this time of year now. Our fall is, is approaching, and it's beautiful. The facilities, as you can see, are immense. A newly renovated library, although you can't see the interior, obviously, you may in some slides coming up, but state of the art, arts and new media center, television studio, 500 seat theater, engineering lab, and, and take a look at that beautiful turf and athletic stadium in the far upper right corner. It, it's, a, it's a wonderful campus. It, it seems large, potentially, but in fact, it, it doesn't feel large. The people are very warm, encouraging, welcoming, and what a, what a great place to take advantage of some awesome opportunities and facilities. Our pillars, <clears throat> the, the four words that you read in front of you, respect, responsibility, investment, and compassion, embody what we strive to encompass every day here at Thornton. Uh, in, in every facet of our teaching, our interaction, our athletic or, or arts competitions or whatnot. I mean, we, we uphold these four pillars and we take them very serious. Academics are obviously an important part of your overall experience. And again, 200 upper school classes, 26 AP level classes, four levels of English ELL classes for our international students, seven foreign languages, which is amazing, uh, and 40 honors courses. And, and just make note of some of the pics that you see here of what the actual facilities look like. Uh, an interactive classroom, uh, where, where an Apple distinguished school, and you can see some of those uh, different devices on the far left pic, the, the library, and, and a couple of other picks, a classroom pick there, and, and, and make note of the different classroom opportunities below as well. It, it's, an, it's an immense opportunity for young people to pick and choose. Visual and performing arts is, is another one of our uh, outstanding departments. And you know we actually send students to some fine art schools and performing art schools as well uh, across the nation uh, and they and they reported back that they're very well prepared to be successful at, at that high level 34 art courses again the, the theater 
four year dance program with, with multiple levels of dance and, and different genres as well. And, and we're not talking uh, just have, you know, come in here and, and we'll put on a performance. I mean, there's room for everybody, but at the same time, we, we produce some very serious musicians and performances. It, it, it's an amazing situation. Athletics. Uh, one one point to mention is, you know, uh, schools that have athletic success, in fact, are rated. And the more athletic success you have, i.e. the more championships you're in, in all of your sports, the higher ranking you get. And in fact, we're proud to say that we are ranking in the top 1% in the nation in high school sports success. And in normal years, we have 57 athletic teams that are that are active and going 72 percent of our student body is participating in sports at some level or another and and you know the numbers of championships speak for themselves in the upper right hand corner and and you can see some pics and you can see some examples of of the different opportunities athletically that that our boys and girls take advantage of For those international students or, or domestic students that choose to board, there are, you know, it's, it's a well-developed machine. Um, the facilities are outstanding. The, the opportunities to engage on an on a on-campus boarding school life uh, opportunity is, is absolutely incredible. And, and again, it, it, it adds another dimension to the, the total experience that students have when they come to TA. Here's a testament to, to the success we have. I mean, we're, we are preparing students regardless of, of what their next step is, but certainly if, if college or university is in your future, then absolutely you're going to be prepared and prepared well. You can see to the, the right side of this pick some of the the college represent some of the colleges that are represented from our, our recent graduates. Um, and, and it's, they're diverse, they're challenging. And in fact, they're all over the, the United States. Well, thanks for, for your time. And, and at this point I'll, I'll hand it back to Katie and she can introduce to you the, the next speaker. Thank you. All right, thanks Clint. That was a great introduction to Thornton Academy and hopefully everybody got a good sense of um, sort of what we're, what we're all about here. Um, before I introduce Lauren, um, I would like to mention that if there will be a question and answer period um, at the end of this presentation, so please feel free down at the bottom of your screen, you've got a Q&A button. Um, please feel free to type in any questions that you would like us to answer um, at any point during this presentation and we'd be happy to answer them at the end of, at the, end of the presentation. So, Next, we've got Lauren Levesque. She's our instructional technology coach. She works with our students and most, most importantly, our teachers um, to make sure that all of the technological devices we have um, really have the most impact in the classroom. So Lauren, let's hear all about technology um, at Thornton Academy. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren. I am a certified English teacher. I taught English for um, quite a few years prior to taking on this role. And my job is primarily working with teachers training them in the uh, staff coaching area around technology use. So Katie's got a slide that uh, is gonna kind of introduce our technology program. We are one-to-one -one iPads, meaning every student is provided with a school iPad that they take home throughout the school year. That's actually 1,500 plus um, devices that we roll out. This year, we rolled out brand new iPads that work with the Apple Pencil. And really exciting news, we just got school-wide Apple Pencils that I spent all day unboxing that are gonna be going out to students soon. Um, we've still got a little work to get those organized. We are the only school I've ever heard of. I mean, like on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you are, Apple, our Apple rep has never heard of a school pulling off a 1500 one-to-one -one Apple Pencil program. So that sets us apart um, so much and we're really excited to do it, especially in today's climate of remote learning. The fact that students will be able to handwrite on a tablet at home to complete that work is a huge deal. We're Apple distinguished and what that means, it's not just um, because we have iPads, we have to apply 
every three years through a very rigorous application program, we write our own iBook that we submit for publishing and it aligns us with Apple's real goals for becoming a true school that uses Apple in an appropriate, professional, efficient, and really energized way. And so they actually send Apple um, tours to us and they'll send other schools from the US, mostly the East Coast, to come and see how we use our iPads, how we, a lot of it being how we distribute, keep track of, take care of, all those other pieces. Um, part of that Apple program are things like I have kind of overseen and even prior to me being here, uh, we have over seven self-written teacher iBooks, which are course textbooks that are interactive. Um, so some of those subjects are like science or math. The teacher has actually created their curriculum in an iBook. In other cases, it's also taking classic texts like the Scarlet Letter and making it you know, engaging and requiring kids actually read the book and answer questions within it. And they've added interactive components to those books themselves as teachers. So teachers are super invested in that process. It's been a real success of something that we've done um, as a tech program. We have 120 school purchased, actually plus now, school purchased applications that we put on student devices that are paid for and monitored by us. So your student wouldn't need an Apple ID or to pay for certain programs that are great from Adobe to note taking um, to organization and then all of the Google suite pieces as well. So we really provide um, awesome tools on that iPad beyond just what it comes with. We have uh, the use of Google Classroom here for our learning environment. So we, this is the first year we've actually been primarily one environment. And it's going pretty well. It meant that I worked with teachers last year to make sure that they were Google certified uh, in a lot of areas to teach on Google Classroom. Um, something else that really sets us apart compared to a lot of schools is that students pay an iPad insurance each year that essentially is their investment in the device to use it for, for personal purposes, but it also means that at the end of four years, they keep their device. And so we just experienced one of those roll throughs at the upper school last year where um, students had paid for their insurance over four years and then they left no matter what grade they were at the end of our four-year term with that iPad that they could keep but then they got reissued their new brand new school iPad this year as well uh, and that's something that we're really proud of that kids want our devices at the end and they're really drawn to our technology to keep those tools and we're really excited about being an Apple school we're pretty proud of it um, something that I think stands out for us looking at us in the local main area is that last year we hosted three other high schools. Gorham High School came for three days just to view our program and kind of learn from what we do. And that's a major compliment. So I just wanted to point that out for you as well. The next slide is about how we've kind of been tackling this virtual learning process, especially in the time of coronavirus and um, all the different things that we've been facing as teachers and one of those things specifically is that we are offering what they call synchronous hybrid courses currently. So our students are half in school and when they're not there, they're zooming in live real time to their teachers. So something else that I started to put together today, everything got shipped at once, is our new um, OWLs, their 360 degree camera, microphone and speaker systems that'll be going into classrooms soon. I'm piloting with a group tomorrow um, to enhance that synchronous system that's kind of happening students at home and students in class at the same time um, and we pay for zoom to do that so instead of relying on google meets as a free product um, we're paying for the back end of zoom like a lot of other schools have not made that investment but we really have um, we're using google classroom to distribute content and we are making it happen so that students aren't not in school when they're at home due to those number changes uh, that means, as you can see in this picture in front of you um, from one of our teachers, that means teachers are juggling a lot of devices. They're managing a lot of technology and they've been doing it so well. I'm super proud of the transition that we've made. We hit the ground running this year and day one of classes, things went off without a major hitch and that was, that was awesome. Teachers are using apps like Nearpod, Edpuzzle, Swank, and Sora. And the reason I point those out is Swank is a virtual library for filmography. So um, one of the biggest things I ran into last year with teachers was I always show a film or I teach film analysis. How do I get films to students? We've invested in an awesome film library that teachers have access to, which means kids can watch those academic films without lagging online. Um, it's the same thing Sora is our virtual library. So 
beyond just classroom experience, we've invested in virtual libraries for students to check out books. So it doesn't just have to be academic. Some of those experiences that we put on your iPads are also for personal use and enrichment activity. For our asynchronous students who are overseas in an international situation that makes it so that they cannot be in class on time due to a time difference, we record all of our Zoom lectures and we have a tech person who is responsible for making sure that those students overseas get that recording. And he's been doing a great job um, kind of making sure that happens. Just, just for a fun fact though, what I did give you at the bottom is these are all of the numbers that we've had of students who are still overseas at some point logging into our Zooms. And so that top 10 locations by meeting participant is our Zoom data for this year. And so we've had students zooming in from all over the world accessing our classes and just really getting some awesome experiences still, even though that they've been stuck home. Uh, and to me, that's just such a representation of what a strong core technology program we have here and how much our teachers and students are really invested in learning. It also equates to, this was actually from two days ago, so it's up higher now, but you know, 1,552 Zoom meetings so far this year as a school. Uh, and that's just the classroom stuff, you know, so I also have teachers who are meeting outside of classrooms and uh, really working to own their craft. So I would say I'm super proud um, to be a part of the tech program here. I'm happy to answer any specific questions, but if you're looking for a school that's tried to kind of do it all and make sure that that remote learning and virtual learning experience uh, stands out, we are definitely, I think, moving mountains to make this happen the best that we can for our students. All right, Lauren, that sounds really, uh, really amazing. Um, I am pretty psyched to check out some of those apps myself. I feel like I learned a lot during that presentation. So uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so next, uh, we have Tiffany Robert, um, who is the principal at TAMS, Thorne Academy Middle School. Um, and she is just absolutely wonderful and, and runs a really great school um, that is warm welcoming and and just a, a wonderful place to go through the the turbulent times of adolescence so um mrs robert let's hear a little bit about tams thank you katie um such a nice welcome gives me goosebumps um so welcome everyone thank you so much for joining um i have to say too that our two student panelists trevor and claire who you'll hear from in just a little bit are TAMS alum and it always just makes me so proud when I have TAMS students on calls like this um, because I'm just so proud of them. I don't think um, Ms. Nikitakis you could have selected two better students so psyched to see them and I know they're going to do fabulous but again I, I get a little bit of that like mama bear and I'm just so proud of them that they're here and representing their school. Um, of course I'm biased, but Thornton Academy Middle School is by far the best middle school that you can find. Um, we are a small, close-knit community. Um, as Ms. Nikitakis said, during young adolescence, this is a time where students are slowly, they're just figuring out who they are, who they want to become. They're starting to slowly move away from their parents, meaning that you know, they, we find that parents will call and say, I don't know what's going on at school anymore. And there's this shift from the elementary to the middle school where students don't go home and share every little bit about their day or the notices aren't in the backpack. And so they're noticing this shift with their kids. And um, we always like to assure parents that we are there for them and we get to know these kids so well. It's a small school, 220 total students. We serve students in grades six through eight. Um, and again, our staff know these kids. I pride myself in knowing every student's name when I walk through the hallway. I can say hello to every student. I know their name. I know their parents. I know where their parents work. I know how to get in touch with them. It's just such a small, close-knit community. And forgive me for repeating that, but it truly is. Um, it's a wonderful school and we have fabulous staff. So we have 25 um, total teachers um, and staff. I know the purpose of this evening is really to focus on technology, so I just want to spend a minute or two talking specifically about technology, although at the end, please feel welcome to ask any questions that you have about TAMS. As Ms. Nikitaka said, please put that in the q and I'm happy to answer anything you would like. Um, 
but I will focus on the technology this evening. So we are also an Apple Distinguished School. We are one-to-one, -one, as um, Ms. Levesque described. So our sixth and seventh graders work on uh, laptops. Our eighth graders have iPads. The real purpose in that is making sure that our eighth graders can transition to the high school flawlessly. They know the apps, they know the learning platforms, and they're able to make that transition beautifully. Um, we've been able to pilot the Apple Pencils. So we've been, our eighth graders have been extremely lucky because they were able to pilot those Apple Pencils prior to everyone at the upper school receiving those. Um, so that was really great. And actually Trevor and Claire spoke last year um, in our library at a very large presentation with members of other communities and tech, um, technology specialists, technology integrators, other administrators. So Claire and Trevor were able to speak to those folks about the wonderful things that they were doing with um, Apple Pencil. So I'm, I'm sure they'll share a little bit about that. But we use technology every day in every classroom. It is embedded in what we do. Uh, last spring when we went remote, it was actually a very smooth transition for the majority of our teachers because they were using it so frequently. Um, there's a tremendous amount of support for our staff. I cannot speak highly enough about Lauren and all of the work that she does with our staff to make sure that they understand all of the programs that are out there. Um, she works with our students. She's just a fabulous support. And again, I don't think you find that at every school. Um, she's able to, with one phone call, she's able to come right over to the middle school and answer any questions that our staff have. If something's not working right, we have an amazing technology department that is right on site that is able to troubleshoot issues right away. And I just don't think that you find that at every school. So our technology is top notch and I would challenge you to find a school out there that provides more for their students when it comes to technology. I just don't think it, it happens. So I've invited um, my assistant principal, Ryan Hersey, this evening to attend and also speak about technology. Ryan is um, my part-time assistant principal and he also teaches seventh and eighth grade science. And Ryan is a fabulous teacher as well as a fabulous assistant principal, um, but he uses technology all the time in the classroom. And so I invited him this evening just to speak to you a little bit of, about our learning platform, Google Classroom, and how he's using technology currently, um, just to give you a sense of what we're doing at TAM. So I'd like to introduce Ryan. Hi everyone. How are you? Um, so uh, we were using Google Classroom uh, prior to um, you know the shutdown last year uh, and remote learning. So um, I, I feel like Google Classroom was was not an issue for us whatsoever uh, as far as using that. I think the kids were very comfortable uh, using Google Classroom. Um, so. Uh, that that really wasn't an issue. Um, we, we had a few uh, tech days and, and got Google Meets going and Zoom going. Uh, and, and after that, um, to be honest, my, my curriculum really didn't change all that much uh, from, you know, what I would have taught in the classroom. Uh, you know, given everything that we have, uh, it was really easy for me to make YouTube videos uh, for demonstrations. Uh, to, to host classes um, and, and have my students, um, you know, participate the way that they normally would. Um, so I feel like, you know, um, like Tiffany said, you know, we, we, after a few days of everybody getting used to learning from home, I, I feel like uh, for the majority of, of our students, um, you know, they didn't really uh, lose a lot of instruction um, in those last three months of school, which was nice. And, and it's great to have them back this year. Um, you know, uh, it's crazy how much our eighth graders have grown over the last six months. Uh, but it, it, it's just so awesome to see them in the classroom now um, and, and learning remotely. And, and I feel like, um, again, not much is changing from my instruction now, uh, now that we have it down. Um, you know, we're going as business as usual and, and kids are getting the, the things that they need uh, to be prepared for the high school, you know, 
physical science class, which, um, you know, I feel really confident if we keep doing what we're doing, um, you know, they're going to be there and they're going to uh, be ready to um, really excel um, their freshman year. Um, whereas students coming from other schools, um, you know, that are doing packet work and other things might, might not have those uh, same advantages that we have. All right, awesome. All right, thank you so much, um, Ryan and Tiffany, um, for that window um, into TAMS. Uh, it's, I can say I used to be the TAMS tennis coach and I'm actually a parent of a TAMS student as well. And everything that they said is right. It is such a, a really remarkable school that's really warm and welcoming and, and it allows students to just flourish in a way that, that I think you don't really see in a lot of other middle schools, so. Um, okay, so next we've got our two, two, well not our two, we have lots of wonderful students, but we've got two of our wonderful students here, um, Claire and, C and Trevor. Um, and Claire and Trevor are both going to uh, introduce themselves briefly. They're going to talk a little bit about what their experience was like at TAMS, and then they're both sophomores this year, so talk a little bit about what their experience has like, been like at the, at the high school as well. So Claire, do you want to unmute yourself and, and kick off with a little bit about yourself and what your TA experience has been like? Sure, that sounds great. Um, my name is Claire. Um, as Mrs. Nikotaka said, I am a sophomore this year. Um, I participate in student council and I also play for the TA girls soccer team, um, as well as I am sophomore class president. So yeah. <laughs> All right, um, sweet. Yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about like what your, like, what your experience was like at TAMS? Uh, sure. I actually moved here uh, before eighth grade, so I I wasn't there for sixth and seventh grade, but everyone was like immediately welcoming and everyone was super nice there. Um, and it was, I think it was a really great experience uh, for me. Okay, so. awesome. Cool, all right, great, thanks. All right, um, Trevor, you wanna introduce yourself briefly? Uh, hello, um, as Mr. Nikitakis said, um, I'm Trevor, I'm a sophomore um, at TA. Um, I'm also on student council with Claire and I'm a soloist for dance company. Um, when I started at TA, I was in eighth grade and I went to the middle school and the transition there was just seamless. The people there were just so accepting and kind and academically, I felt like I was being better prepared for the high school curriculum by TAMS. And once I got into high school, um, I would just like to say I have my iPad here. These things are a lifesaver. You can take notes on them. You can like use it as a laptop. You can type on them. I absolutely love using my iPad for school. You don't even need a notebook anymore um, if you have your iPad with you. And I would just like to say that I don't know how the teachers managed to seamlessly transition into online schooling because if I were in that position, I would panic. And I'm just so happy to be here and have the opportunity to um, learn online and in person at the same time. Awesome. All right, thank you guys so much, um, both Claire and Trevor. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now so I can get to the Q and A. Um, and uh, just please feel free, uh, if you are an attendee, to, to type in any questions that you may have um, into the Q&A at any point. Um, I've got a couple of questions that we're going to get started with. Um, and then, yeah, if you do think of any questions, please feel free to type them in. So one question that I have um, is, I've heard a lot about Apple Pencils, but I don't really know what those are. Can you guys, um, Lauren, can you tell us maybe a little bit um, about like what does an Apple Pencil do? Why is that important? Why is it such a big deal? Yeah, so I mean, I can answer this question and I'm sure Trevor or Claire can probably give you a better perspective on this, but I will say I, I live with my Apple Pencil and I feel lost without it. And it's, it's just, there's no way for me to describe it, I guess, until you get one. But essentially, as someone who likes to handwrite things, you feel this real barrier between your schoolwork when it's, typed on a, on a, especially on something like an iPad, which is more tablet based and not keyboard based. So giving an Apple pencil to a student essentially opens up this world of like notebook, artwork, math, 
everything that once felt a little more um, hard where you had to work around everything becomes very natural. And I think that what is really sticks with me is seeing the different ways that kids like to use the pencil. It's such a unique experience to each kid. Like Trevor or Claire, do you mind telling us what you like to use a pencil for? Um, I remember in eighth grade, everyone was like, it was such a big thing when everyone got their Apple pencils. That was like a really fun um, experience. And uh, in eighth grade, I, we basically just used our Apple pencils for everything. I remember in a lot of my classes, we used Notability um, to take notes and teachers would pass out worksheets on Google Classroom when then we would transfer them over to Notability and then do all our work there. And I also remember um, for art class, sometimes we'd use those to like sketch stuff out in a uh, sketchbook. So yeah, and then I remember when we, when everyone was like, found out we didn't get Apple pencils when we went to the high school, everyone was super bummed out. Um, but knowing that we were maybe, it was a possibility that we were gonna get them um, again for future years was exciting. So it's good to know that we're gonna have them again. Yeah, that makes me feel so much better after unboxing all of those today. <laughs> Trevor, what about you? Um, I also just found out about the Apple Pencil today and I am very excited because I used that Apple Pencil religiously in eighth grade for about every assignment in every class. Like Ms. Levesque said, I'm also a very learn down the arm type of person. So I love to write out my notes and write out everything. And um, I remember, I don't know why I'm bringing this story up, but there was one time that I lost my pencil and I cried about it because I just loved it so much and needed it for my classes. And I felt genuinely lost and heartbroken, but I found it. So everything came to a nice end. <laughs> I'll jump in really quick too. I think a really great example of this was last year, we had um, Gorham High School visit, like I had mentioned, to see, and I know Tiff's rem remembering this moment too, because I'll, I'll be forever changed from this, but um, we essentially had Gorham visit and they were trying to decide on iPads or laptops. And they wanted students to kind of make this decision between Chromebooks and they were bringing them to different schools and giving them the devices. And one of the students mentioned, could we see what your middle school eighth grade pilot program looks like with the pencils? And I had not planned. I had not done that because I knew it was an expensive endeavor. I didn't want them to get lost in a tool they couldn't have. But once they asked for it, I called Tiff, well, my, co my colleague called Tiffany and she said, you know, Mrs. Robert, will you send somebody up to talk about Apple pencils that's a student? So three students came up off the cuff and sat in front of these strangers that they were not prepared for this meeting in the middle of their school day. And I asked them the question, you know, how do you use your Apple Pencil? They gave us really similar answers and it was great. And then somebody in the room said, how do you use your Apple Pencil, um, you know, for outside of school things? And this student in front of us who I had not prepped and we had no sense of this went, oh, can I show them my drawing? And she airplayed up on the screen behind us the most beautiful, like almost pencil sketch drawing that I had ever seen. And it, I, I should have really pretended that I had meant to do that because the kid, it was just such a natural moment of um, really great tech tool in a kid's personal life that was such a success story. And I had never planned it. So I, if you ask every kid, they're going to tell you a story similar to that with that pencil experience. It just enhances, it's such an enhancement to the tech tool. Uh, and as as a teacher, uh, we're able to go in on Google Classroom, and I like using the pencil to to grade, to make notes uh, on student assignments. Uh, I think it's it's a little bit easier, um, and the kids tend to uh, look at it a little bit more. Um, you know, if I'm doing those rather than just typing in uh, things from uh, Google Classroom. Uh, also, uh, a couple years ago, we, we put out a challenge for students to design a, a science fair um, poster, and we had a girl come up with, I thought she had like taken the cartoon from somewhere and then put it into Canva, uh, but she used an app uh, on the iPad with her Apple Pencil and actually drew um, you know, a, a phenomenal drawing. Uh, of two students um, with science materials and, and, and then put it on Canva. Uh, and you would think that that was a, a professional um, drawing. 
That's really awesome. Okay, well, I think now I'm a convert on the Apple Pencil, so I can't wait to see them in action. So pretty exciting. Um, okay, good. I'm going to sort of pick on Trevor and Claire a little bit for the next question. And I want you guys, it sounds like you guys have been with us both for the same amount of time, eighth grade, freshman year, and now part, part way through sophomore year. So I want you guys to think about um, a favorite class or a favorite teacher that you've had and talk about like why that class or that teacher um, was so special. So is there anything that stands out either at TAMS or last year, freshman year or something even that's just starting right now, sophomore year? Is there any favorite um, teacher or um, class that really stands out for you guys? Um, this is very awkward because I had Mr. Hersey, but <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite teacher here at TA definitely has to be Miss Campbell. She's the dance company teacher and she has such a community and environment that she's created in the dance um, curriculum as a whole where um, you can go up to any dance ones, dance student at all and ask them and have a conversation with them, talk to them about anything, talk to them about dance. And when this whole coronavirus mess hit, she was so quick to come up with a new curriculum where we interviewed um, professional dancers, talked to them, and had like a Q&A session with them and had to learn from firsthand experiences of professional dancers. And uh, she's just always out for the betterment of all of her students. And she's such a good person to talk to for general advice. That sounds really awesome. Yeah, she she's really developed a great program. There's over 200 students that participate in our dance program um, from from all walks of life. And it's a it's a, it's a great program for someone that's a beginning dancer or someone like Trevor that already had some dance experience before he came to to TA. So um, cool. All right, Claire, what do you think? Um, I have Miss Hershey as well. So I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but I would have to say I, all the all the teachers that I've had so far at um, Thornton Academy or that I've like met um, have been and they're amazing they're all it's some really great staff um, but I think that my two favorite teachers would have to be Mr. Rackmills and Mr. Frost um, they both created really like welcoming community environments um, for their for their students and in their classrooms and there are still two teachers that I can, can like go back to their classrooms every now and then and like I can say hi to them and just pick up a conversation and it's really awesome. Um, and Mr. Rackmills is now a, I think, yeah, he works at TAMS now um, and teaches English over there. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, okay. Well, um, I think that's pretty much all the questions I see. So I want to just leave it open to any of our panelists to see if there's any sort of final words of wisdom or anything final that you want to share about Thorn Academy or technology. And then if nothing else, after that, I'll just sort of wrap it up. So any final words from any panelists? Okay, well, good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, uh, for attending Thornton Academy's uh, virtual open house here featuring technology. Um, I hope you guys, again, learned we've made an investment, um, which is one of our pillars. So we've made an investment in technology um, for the past 10 years or so, and we're really seeing it pay off um, in this, you know, modern day situation where we are with COVID, um, but also just in general, you know, like technology is going to be with us no matter what happens in the world. Um, and so we're really proud to educate our students and how to use it appropriately and how um, the use of technology can really better your education as well. So um, we encourage you to stay in touch with us here at Thornton Academy. Um, you will all receive a follow-up email from me tomorrow. So thanks again for taking the time to be with us this evening, um, and we hope to see you on our campus very soon. So thank you, and have a good night. Oh, thank and you can, I ask, the, can I ask the panelists to stay on for a second? Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. No hard feelings, Claire or Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Claire and Trevor, I actually appreciate your comments because every middle school student when they're at TAM says that Mr. Hersey's their favorite teacher. So I think tonight you brought him down just a little peg. And for that, I thank you. All right, good. So I, I just took away all the attendees. So, um, and I'm going to actually stop recording.